Oklahoma won a football game. Welcome in. Eddie Rodosvich, George Stoya here from Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, Oklahoma. They win, which is interesting. Not only, not only did they win, they beat that ass tonight. They played well. They played well. Dylan Gabriel with a school record, tw uh, eight touchdowns, 23 of 36, five touchdowns, 423 yards, five through the air, three on the ground, George. And uh, I think that's where we got to start offensively. A very good performance tonight for Dylan Gabriel, Jeff Levy, and company. Yeah, no, Dylan was fantastic tonight. He missed on some throws here and there, especially in the first half, but uh, he was really efficient throughout the game. I, I thought Jeff Lebby called maybe the best game of his career. I mean, the offense was incredibly efficient. It felt like, um, you know, they got back to somewhat of the basics. They were doing a lot of things, throwing it down the field. They ran the ball really well. Gavin Sachuk looks to be like their starting running back moving forward. The offensive line played well without Tyler Guyton. Uh, who, you know, would typically be a big loss. Jacob Sexton came in and played really well. Uh, and they didn't make the dumb mistakes, right? Yeah. We talked all week, self-inflicted self mistakes, right? Turnovers, they didn't turn the ball over tonight other than the muffed punt, which is obviously not on the offense. Uh, you know, the self-inflicted penalties, I think they only had one pre-snap penalty tonight on a false start by Walter Rouse. So, and they didn't have those ones that would, you know, kill a drive. Sure. Uh, and even then, I think they overcame a couple, I think they had one, um, on the tight end, who's the, what's the tight end's name? Josh Finale, yeah, Finuli, who we haven't seen because Blake Smith wasn't out there. Uh, they overcame that one, but no, the offense was fantastic. I mean, maybe the best offensive performance this year against a quality opponent in West Virginia. I mean, West Virginia has been playing really good football, so for them to do that, I think says a lot. Drake Stoops, we didn't even mention him. He was fantastic tonight. So uh, offense, it really was clicking today. Career night for Drake Stoops. Uh, he ends up going for, I, I believe it was like 164, like uh, 10 receptions. Had the had an unbelievable uh, grab there in the fourth quarter. I thought he got Cheap knocked shot. out. Cheap shot. Uh, i still shocked that there was no unsportsmanlike penalties after that play, especially considering an entire fight broke out. The officiating, it, it is what it is at this point, folks. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you're, you're, you're not going to get every call and, and the officiating, I just, I don't even want to talk about it, Eddie, because it's just, it's just whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting, but let's backtrack. Let's go back to the first quarter. West Virginia takes the opening kickoff. Uh, they end up scoring, they go up seven to nothing. And I think that there was a lot of people, including probably both of us that thought, oh shit, here we go. Uh, but the response. Oklahoma goes down and scores, and then they run off a bunch of three and outs to uh, kind of get that thing on the right track. Even with the Gavin uh, Freeman muff punt, you're still able to get off the field. They miss the kick. Uh, it was a really good night, just kind of over, over, overall. And, you know, I think that it was probably the most complete game that Oklahoma's played uh, through the first 10. Yeah, no, it, it is. I mean, other than maybe Arkansas State, which, you know, do you really count that? Tulsa, uh, it, it's up there. And again, against a good football team, I think the way the defense responded to Eddie, I know we talked a lot about the offense, but for the defense to give up that first long drive and then come back and play really well, I don't think West Virginia had another first down until the next four drives. Uh, they turned it over on downs one time. Um, you know, Reggie Pearson gets the pick. I think that was in the second half, maybe. So they were really good tonight. Danny Stutzman being back, I think, was a huge lift for them. Uh, in the second half, they really shut them down. And then the offense was able to score to put the game away. And we've talked a lot about that, right? Is like when they can go score and go up two, three, four scores, you're putting it way out of reach. And I think that that's the biggest thing you take away is this team finally had that killer instinct. And again, against a quality opponent, I'm not saying West Virginia is a bunch of world beaters, sure. but that's a solid football team. And sure. Neil Brown's done a really good job there this year. And, and I think that they expected to come in here and compete. So uh, I, I thought it was, honestly, Eddie, other than the Texas game, it might be their most impressive victory of the season. Let's talk about the uh, defense just overall. You got Danny Stutzman back today. He starts alongside Kip Lewis. Yep. Uh, that looks like quite the tandem. Yeah, Kip, man, he's a stud. I mean, that kid is going to be a superstar. Uh, and just think about that linebacker room in general. I mean, you've got four guys you feel really good about in there. And I even thought Jaron Kanick, look, he got benched, flat out got benched. He came in tonight and had some really nice moments coming off the bench. So when you have that kind of depth, Kobe McKenzie came in and played really well. But Danny Stutzman and Kip Lewis, you have those two guys in the game. Uh, and I still don't think Danny's 100%. Sure. Uh, but they were really solid in the run game, getting after the quarterback a few times when they bring him on blitzes. So uh, they were really sound defensively tonight. I thought the defensive line had a really good game. They controlled and, the and line. And that was going to be something we talked about on the uh, 
opponent preview with Gabe Eichard yeah. that they were going to have to play extremely well given that West Virginia has a really good offensive line. And Neil, Neil Brown said in his post-game press conference, this is the first game all season that he felt like their offensive line got beat. And that's saying something because that is that's a good group up front for them. There's a reason they're they're sixth best in the in the country in rushing offense. Uh, so for Oklahoma to kind of shut it down, I don't know what West Virginia ended up running for. Uh, I, I think Brent said after the game they only had 100 total yards in the second half tonight. Uh, so to be able to do that is is really impressive. And again, I think the defense has been solid all year. They've not been an issue. Uh, but for me, the story tonight is uh, once again the offense figuring it out uh, finally. And it, it gives you a lot of hope about this group heading forward, Eddie. I mean, we talked a lot about it all week. This thing could, could have gone one of two ways. And, and I get it. At Oklahoma, the expectation is to compete for national titles, and that's out of the picture. But if Oklahoma goes and takes care of business these next two weeks, uh, they could maybe find themselves in the Big 12 championship game. They got some help today with Kansas losing to Texas Tech. OSU goes and gets blown out by UCF and just an awful game by them. Uh, you know, Texas kind of screwed around with TCU. We'll see what happens with the Big 12, but uh, this is really important to go finish this thing out, and I, I think today gives you some confidence that they can. A much-needed breath of fresh air for uh, Oklahoma players, coaches, fans. Yeah. Everybody that is associated with the University of Oklahoma, maybe media. It was, uh, it was, it was a very. I think uh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It, it was a very uh, cathartic. cathartic. Is that the? Cathartic. That's a big word. Okay, I like think that's the word. Is it? I'm gonna get roasted if it's not. It better be. <laughs> we'll we'll bleep it out or something. But no, it was a very good performance for Oklahoma tonight. 59 to 20, uh, they win and two games left in the regular season. A trip out to Provo next week and then uh, right back here at uh, Owen Field with uh, TCU and the Black Friday game. It's uh, a little bit weird, too, that, uh, you know, we were talking about this on the radio uh, pregame show this morning. Final Big 12 Saturday yeah. in Norman. Yeah, weird. Um, you know, I, I mean, I guess Friday, that Friday game with TCU is, is still will be interesting, but um, it's weird, it's, you know, saying goodbye to West Virginia. I, I, I don't know. I'm excited uh, for the SEC, but I also I, I, I want to see how the season plays out, man. Like, this is such a big year. I think these last couple games, while some people are like, oh, well, you know, what are they really competing for? Sure. This is a big step for the program. If they can get to double-digit wins, go play in a New Year's Six Bowl, um, it would mean a lot for this group. And I think a lot of these players, especially look how many young guys they're playing out there. You mentioned yeah. Kip Lewis. A lot of these guys are going to be back next year. This is really good, valuable experience these next couple weeks. And they should win. BYU – Got their ass kicked by Iowa State today. Uh, TCU came up close against Texas, but oh, you should beat TCU at home. Sure. Um, you know these are two really big weeks these next weeks. And again, I, Eddie, I don't know, man. I, I just think something weird. Oh no, happen. here he goes. I think something weird's going to happen in the Big 12, and somehow OU oh, might find themselves playing in Arlington. Uh, and if they play like they did today, Eddie, there's uh, there's few teams in the country. I think that can beat Oklahoma when they play like they did today. Really, really uh, interesting week ahead with OU headed out to BYU, a new experience for us. Texas going up to Ames next weekend, and then uh, Kansas State playing Kansas, coming off of the loss today to Texas Tech, as you mentioned. So Oklahoma improves to 8-2 and two on the season, 5-2 and two in the Big 12, a 59-20 to 20 victory here in Norman, and everybody is smiling because – George doesn't have to drop any f bombs tonight well, on the Eskridge Lexus post game show. Maybe I should because uh, they played a lot better when I did. So, let's talk real quick. Jeff Levy, he was really good tonight. What do you think the biggest difference was between what we got tonight versus what we've seen over the last two weeks? I mean, is it just simply completing passes, running the football, like the very simple elements of the game, eliminating the pre-snap penalties, eliminating the turnovers, at least on the offensive side of the football? I think it definitely comes down to execution. You know, they didn't put the ball in harm's way. I mean, I can't even think tonight. I mean, Dylan had one maybe over sure. the middle where it was almost picked off, but they really just held on the ball, uh, number one. They didn't have the, the, the penalties that set you back where you're behind the sticks to start. And then I think they got back to what they're good at, which is throwing the ball down the field. Uh, I mean, how many passes over the middle did they complete yeah. today? It was a lot. Uh, they were just throwing it down Drake, the field. Drake and Nick Anderson were unbelievable, yeah. both over 100 yards tonight. They did a lot of gap scheme stuff on offense in terms of running the football, and they stuck with Gavin Sawchuk, which was the first time we've seen them kind of really stick with a running back throughout an entire game. I still think Tawi's a little bit banged up, which is probably why. Sure. But, you know, I thought they, they finally got him into a rhythm. Um, I don't know how many carries he ended up with, but he played really well. And I think they just kept it simple, Eddie. And then they just didn't make the mistakes. And yeah. it, 
you know, I think we so much just, you know, Jeff Levy's the scapegoat. And trust me, he deserves a lot of the blame, especially the Kansas game and execution. It does come down to coaching a lot of the times. But, it, again, you look back at these last the, the last two losses, and a lot of it came down to they just they just turned the ball over. And, and that's that's players making mistakes, and, and those things happen. And that's college football. And, and Dylan Gabriel talked about that tonight. Yeah. That's just part of it. Uh, that's part of the learning experience. And I think that's part of – Jeff also just learning as a play caller as he goes. Yeah. Real quick, uh, before we get out of here, injury situation. Tyler Guyton didn't play. I, I've heard that it could be a possible concussion sustained during the week of practice. I know that I think you heard the same as yeah. well. I think he'll be back next week. Desaul McCullough? I think he will also be back next week. like a preliminary? Yeah, I don't think he was um, – like if they were, if this was the Big 12 championship game, I think he would have been out sure. there maybe. Uh, but I, I don't really know what's going on with him. Brent said he's a little bit banged up, but he did also say he expects him to play next week at BYU. And Drake Stoops is okay. I know that yeah. he came in and talked to the media. I thought he got knocked out. Got the, he told us that he just got the wind knocked out of him and that he just wanted to lay there for a second. Um, and then he just watched hey. the brawl unfold. So. Hey, when you have 10 receptions for, uh, you know, he's, a he's, buck 68, he's been incredible. He's, he, it, it probably gets overshadowed over the last – at least what he did in Stillwater, and then combined with today, he's been Oklahoma's best offensive football player. I can't remember if I said this on last week's show or what it was, but he is the perfect representation of what this program is about, what they want it to be about. Uh, the dude is phenomenal, and uh, you know he's really underrated as a player because I think we just look at him and we're like, oh, really, this guy's yeah. going to – and he's, he's a stud, man. He, he doesn't drop passes. He makes plays downfield. He doesn't get tackled. Uh, he's just – he's unbelievable, man, and, and it, it's hard to describe it. You know, Neil Brown was talking about him after the game, unprompted, just saying he is one heck of a football player, uh, and you turn on the tape and you see it, and he, he said he thinks he's going to play in the NFL, and I agree. I agree. I don't, I don't – I mean, I don't know if he'll get drafted, sure. uh, but if a team is smart, they'll find him, pick him up, and find a role for him because he's a, he's a, he's a football player. It was really cool to see as everybody was grouped around Drake uh, in the Red Room after the game doing interviews. Bob. Bob was out in the back and just had a big cheese yeah. and smile on his face. Yeah. You know, he's proud of him. So really good positive vibes here in Norman. Oklahoma wins 59 to 20. We will be back for Monday show with Josh McQuestion. And then we're headed over to the office to do the Eskridge Lexus postgame show with Kerry Murdoch. So for George Stoya, I'm Eddie Radosevich. Positive vibes, nothing to bitch about today. OU wins.